What's up guys, it's Eventon here. I'm actually really happy with the way my last few videos have gone. I've noticed a lot of subscribers, I've a lot of, noticed a ton of interaction happening in some of my recent videos, especially my speculative um, like Orca nerf video, which I probably should have put that in the tile, like, hey, this is all speculation and none of this is, you know, I said it was gonna confirm to happen. This was just merely my opinion if CCP were to implement certain nerfs for the Orca. This is probably where they would be targeting for the most part. And I did learn a lot of stuff about the porpoise and low sec mining. Um, got some really interesting stories. So I love the interaction there and a lot of the banter that was happening um, in the comments. But I, someone did mention that, uh, you know, hey, Orca's are already getting uh, ganked a lot. They're already very vulnerable. We don't need to nerf the EHP more than it already is. And I, I just took a quick look uh, that day specifically. And I noticed a lot of very, very silly uh, orca fits for the most part. So I think uh, I wanted to take a look here at some of the orca fits and how they're basically being asked to be ganked because some of the fits are quite um, silly like I mentioned before. Uh, as well as some of the things that the orca pods are doing themselves to actually set them up to be ganked. Even a solo gank. Some of these orcas are dying to a single ship so I wanted to kind of go over that uh, here in a second some ways to avoid it. So we're going to take a look at the orca fits. We're actually going to take a look at some of the ganker fits too so we know how to prepare ourselves, uh, build up proper defenses uh, against it in case it does happen to us. So we'll go ahead and take a look at it here right now. So just to start off, we're going to be strictly looking at the high sec uh, orca deaths for the most part. We're not going to be looking into low sec or no sec at all because that's, I mean, you can get ganked by anything and everything. And there's pretty much no concord there to defend you. So we're going to be strictly looking at high sec ganks for the most part. And I'm actually going to hold off on showing you my fits to the very end, at least what I use personally for like solo mining, as well as fleet mining as well. Um, and again, like I said, we're going to be actually looking, I have a bunch of the tabs already kind of pulled up. We're going to go ahead and look down at some of the fits here already. I looked at this one and I believe this was one, sorry for the bright light. Uh, this was from a war. So I was like, man, he only, he got ganked by 11 ships and they're a huge variety, but that was uh, because they're at war so I mean that's pretty much the equivalent of being ganked um, in like lower null sec for the most part so uh, also look at this one here this was in domain so this is a 1.0 um, system another war gank so that's another one that we kind of don't want to take too much time looking at I have a feeling if it's in GDA, it's probably another war gank there but I'm trying to find ones where people could have set up a proper defense and actually survived long enough for Concord to show up so um so you can see here mostly catalysts uh actually a tornado we got a few other ships too um as well so one thing i do like and this is pretty similar to my fit but not exactly at least for like the solo fit is i do like the damage control and reinforced bulkheads um in my honest opinion if you are flying an orca and you do not have these two in your lows you are honestly doing something wrong uh this is by far going to give you the most ehp possible for your orca um one thing i don't like are these drone navigation computers i mean this does help speed up um obviously the speed of your mining drones but if you're doing a decent enough job of like hugging the asteroids that you're mining um and as long as you stay i would say within like 3,000 um kilometers like you should be fine you don't need too many of these um and if you're doing having your drones travel that far of a distance um, you're not doing something right you might as well just stack them up on like one asteroid um the other thing i don't like is he's using compact uh, shield hardeners and also nothing in the highs for the most part. So me personally, I would run some um, shield boosters in the top to boost drone defense. I, again, I'll get more into my fit, but I kind of want to just point out some of the things that are missing here. So, I mean, if you're going to spend 1.2 billion on an Orca, you might as well just <laughs> get the tech two version of the shield hardeners. If you can't afford the tech two shield hardeners, you should hold off on getting an Orca until you can actually afford it. Uh, okay, so we'll go ahead and look at a couple more here before we start diving in uh, to the ones that I have here. So this is a solo kill, not war. This is actually one of the things I do want to cover here in a second. So this person wasn't at war. Uh, this, who knows, this could have been a, um, what do you call it, a kill right, something like that. This could have been the case. But again, I am not a huge fan at all of these expanded cargo holds, and this person has a lot of weird E-roll, yeah, E-war in the mid slot. So I'm not sure if this was like a battle orca or something like that, or they were dueling, and 
he, yeah, this is just a very, very weird fit. It just does not make sense uh, in my head, and especially why you have the expanded cargo holds. Like, if you're going to build, be built for battle, might as well build uh, for the damage control unit and some other stuff. So these are just some really just very, very odd fits that we're seeing so far. So we'll go ahead and take a look at one more. I haven't even looked at some of these that I'm showing you guys here um, right now. So you guys are seeing quite a few of these, like, solo kills. And this is mainly because, and I've seen this before with a Nurgle, um, again, these expanded cargo holds, and I understand you you get an extra like twenty or thirty thousand um, meters cubed with a like, cargo hold expanders, but like your EHP is so low. Like not only are you not getting the extra hole resistance uh, from using the bulkhead and the damage control unit, your this fit just does not make any sense. You're not increasing your defense. You're actually actively nerfing it, and this is the exact kind of thing that. Um, gankers are going to be looking for and i'm going to explain here in a second why um how you're actually getting ganked by these solo ships 1v1 so just looking at a gank here i just pulled this one up this one actually happened pretty recently so just a few days ago ganked by 20 catalysts for the most part looks like there's a few other ships as well again expanded cargo holds you guys need to get rid of this it's honestly not worth it um if you have industrial command ship up to three or four i mean 160,000, 180,000. Um, meters cubed of ore should be more than enough and you can even fill up your fleet hangar too as well as well as your cargo hold um, you don't need all this extra stuff um, drone navigation computer like that's that's fine like I'll this this fit is okay I'm not a fan of having the scope survey scanner and the drone nav um, this looks like this could have been a fleet fit not a hundred percent sure um, but again like you're just completely nerfing yourself I mean I'd be surprised if this guy's EHP was maybe over hundred and seventy thousand to be honest, when some of the fits on my ships are pushing about 400,000 EHP, which I'll cover them here um, in a second. So uh, what are these catalysts looking like? So we'll go ahead and look at some of these catalyst fits. I've noticed most of the time these catalysts are using two different types of fits. So usually they're either using the Tech 1 Neutron Blasters. And Okay, it looks like this person was the one that actually engaged uh, the fight which is why they have the warp scrambler and they have like nothing in the rigs because sometimes they actually have um, some damage increase like in the rigs but for the most part they're using tech one neutron blasters and they use these kaldari navy antimatter charges which does thermal and kinetic but it does more kinetic than thermal so i'm kind of noticing that code is i think switching up their catalyst fits to maybe do go more in line with this because this fit is only about two mil for the most part so it's very very inexpensive and for the most part i think uh kinetic if you actually put certain types of hardeners it's actually kind of a hole when it comes to the orca which i'll cover here uh in a second but then the other uh where is it the other catalyst fit that i see more often is these uh tech 2 light neutron blasters and then also void s which also does an equivalent amount of thermal and kinetic damage so this can push more damage overall, uh, but again, this fit is almost is basically six and a half, almost seven million. So it could be one of those things that code is actually starting to switch up their the fits on their catalyst just to make it a bit cheaper. They are doing a little bit less damage, but again, remember this gank had twenty catalysts, and this person was severely <laughs> under tank. So this is all stuff that they they scout ahead of time. I'm pretty sure they cargo scan you or they ship scan you. I mean. To see what kind what your fit looks like and the second you become a target they're going to start rallying together um, to take you out uh, okay that's already there and i actually want to show this one silly enough i don't know if this person just wasn't paying attention like this guy's fit actually isn't terrible again i'm not a huge fan of the drone navigations um for the most part but i think this guy just wasn't paying attention because you got killed by a solo npc casual so make sure you guys aren't completely afk and for some strange reason even if you do have your combat drones out they won't always aggro. I don't know why. It does. Sometimes that happens, but sometimes you just won't aggro uh, whatever is attacking you, including NPC ships, uh, for the most part. So, uh, again, another gank. Just kind of wanted to show this. This one was actually nine. Uh, this person's fit actually isn't terrible. I think actually I already showed this one, or the one that's like very similar to this. So we'll go ahead and close that. Go ahead and close the catalyst fit. And here, this one's the one that I think is the closest. Um, this is pretty close to what my fleet fit looks like. So she doesn't have rigs that will increase her um, mining drone output or mining drone yield. 
but this is pretty darn close to my fleet fit. Uh, there are some things I would put up here to increase our tank, but I love the damage control and the reinforced bulkhead. Um, I like the multi-spectral hardeners here. I use a 500 MN um, micro warp drive too in my fit. But what's happening here is a lot of the time that these Nurgles will show up <clears throat> in your belt and obviously you're killing NPC rats that are shooting you. And so the wrecks are there, but you're so busy mining, you don't bother with the wreck. So a lot of the time these people will do is they'll warp to your belt. They'll loot the wreck, making them suspect. So now they're blinking yellow, which means you can freely engage them, which is cool, right? Free kill. You get a little frigate Nurgle and you're able to kill them. Um, that is not the case because this actually happened to me. Luckily, I was in a small fleet and um, I was actually able to kill one. Where is it? All right, here it is. So this is me. This is my alt. This is some random guy I added in my fleet who was a, using a mining gnosis for some reason. And so this is typically what the fit looks like. It's something like this where they usually have a nosferatu in the, in the high the Entropic Disintegrator, they use a uh, Afterburner, Warp Scram, just to keep you there. A uh, lot of self-healing. So basically what these people do is make themselves suspect on purpose. They go find solo orcas that are obviously mining, and they hope that you engage them. Because the second you engage them, it, it opens up both of you to basically attack each other without Concord interference. So basically what this person does is just start orbiting you really, really quickly. You send your drones after them. He starts slowly killing your drones off until... Because there's no, the orca can't use any weapons. They can only use drones to really defend themselves for the most part. The drones are really strong, but if this person's moving fast enough and healing enough, uh, your drones just can't kill them. And so in this case, what he'll do is call, def, you know, de defang your ship, which means he'll kill all of your drones until you, there's no drones left to defend yourself. And because he's uh, warp scramming you and your ship is incredibly, incredibly slow, you're basically locked down. And he'll just slowly kill you as long as it takes. I mean, it could take... Uh, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. I don't know. I don't know how long these kills take, but uh, I see this all the time uh, right here. Like this person, again, actually not a completely terrible fit. If you have a damage control and a reinforced bulkhead in the lows, you're already halfway there when it comes to, to tank. But these other things I'm not a huge fan of, but again, you basically just got soloed. This person, again, I'm not a huge fan of the inertial stabilizer and the overdrive injector. Uh, but again, got soloed. So it seems like there are certain pilots that do a very good job of this um, baiting orcas into attacking them because they loot a nearby NPC wreck um, into attacking them. And so I just got lucky here because I think we just had way too many drones for him to handle. I'm not sure why he engaged us, um, but he did. And so we ended up killing him, got a nice bit of loot. And I think I actually split the loot with this guy. He seemed like a relatively new player. He was mining in a Gnosis. So I give him his split of the loot because he helped me uh, kill the thing. So now that we've seen the fits um, about what the gankers are using, so we looked at the catalyst fit, we looked at the Nurgle fit. So now we know we need to tank up. Uh, we need to start resisting some thermal and kinetic damage, as well as just, just if something is blinking yellow and you're in an orca, just don't attack it. Just don't attack anything when you're in an orca pretty much ever, uh, and you should be fine. And if you are getting engaged on, you just need to tank up and hope you survive. So... Uh, we'll go ahead and look at my fits and honestly my best defenses against some of these ganks uh, from code and some other large people in the area <sighs> look at that ain't she a beauty um, okay we'll go ahead and jump into the fits here um, this is my this is my recommended solo orca fit this isn't what i'm currently using i'm doing something it's it's extremely similar to this um, but i've actually ch ended up changing my fit a little bit um, since I learned about these ganks and kind of the damage types they're using and kind of what you're vulnerable to, because I was running something similar to this prior. Um, I was running EM Shield Hardener because I wanted to like kind of level up my resistances and make sure it's kind of more even across the board. Um, I was using a, no a drone navigation computer because I was doing some solo mining and some of the asteroids were kind of fall apart, far apart. But um, it's, that's just like not needed. I really think just sacrificing a ton of um, EHP is just not worth mining a tiny bit faster with your drone. So this is what I was running prior, but this is what I recommend for people that are in Orca um, doing solo mining. So in order to actually see the accurate amount of EHP, you do want to drag these uh, shield extension chargers, like these shield charges up here, because I do run two shield command bursts, because they do affect you as well. They don't just affect your fleet members, but they affect you as well. So um, the shield extension charge increases your shield HP, 
The shield harmonizing charge, as you'll see here, um, increases your resistances across the board. So you'll see that that was 36, went up to 40. And then if we took that off, so that was uh, 37,500. And then once we've thrown the shield extension charge, that goes up to 40,000. So we basically gained um, quite a bit of EHP so far. So with just the fit as is, uh, 305,000 EHP, it's pretty darn good. Um, if we overload these, we can push it to uh, 321,000. So um, obviously the tank there um, is really, really good, especially if we compare it to some of the fits that we were seeing earlier. Um, I left this mid slot open because um, you can do a lot of things with it. Um, I mean, if you are solo mining, obviously you don't need any um, survey scanners or anything like that. I mean, you can throw in a uh, drone navigation computer. All right, I should probably click on the mid slot there. Can't throw in a drone nav computer so your drones move a little bit faster. Um, I guess if you have a very, very strong large shield extender, I guess you could put that in there. But I think overall the EHP that you get is still better, and this is my recommendation, is just throwing in another multi-spectral uh, shield hardener too, which of course will increase our two most important resistances because these are the two that always get targeted by catalysts, whether they're using the Ford SMR or they're using that Caldari one that I talked about earlier. Um, and it's actually good that our kinetic is a bit higher because if they do end up using that Caldari ammo, it targets the kinetic more. And so um, I think this is gonna keep us pretty darn safe. And if, again, if we overload all these, now we're pushing 358,000 EHP. Um, it's gonna take a lot of catalysts uh, to take us down. So, um, of course, the damage control two in the in the low, as well as the reinforced bulkhead. Honestly, you should have this in the lows. If you're flying an orca at any point ever, unless you're doing some really weird uh, troll PvP fit, like these, these should always be in the lows, no matter what. Fleet solo doesn't matter. Uh, that should pretty much always be there. Um, I'll go ahead and go over my fit, what I have currently. Uh, and again, I'll go ahead. It's not what I meant to do. Oh, they already have it in there. So we'll go ahead and simulate it. I actually cheated a bit, and I actually have an abyssal damage control. So the abyssal damage controls uh, increase your hull resistance, which is actually what the majority of the um, EHP of the Orca has. So um, if we actually simulate this, so according to this, if we overheat these, which is what you should do if you're getting ganked, we have about 392,000 EHP. But if we remove this, and we just add a normal, um, damage control 2, because we have an abyssal damage control 2, uh, this gets about 364,000. So we're missing out on almost 30,000 EHP, which is roughly like, I would say about 8%. So, and I think that abyssal damage control costs like 50, maybe 70,000, um, or sorry, 50 or 70 million uh, ISK. So it's relatively cheap, especially if you're investing 1.2 bill in an Orca anyway. Um, so essentially what you do is you open up the contracts, you click on contract search, um, you know, courier is what you do to like move stuff. But if you click on buy and sell and you type in abyssal damage control, um, you can get some really cheap abyssal damage controls like this one right here for 1.6 mil. I mean, it, it, the, the downside is that it only costs eight more CPU, but you get 10 more, 10% 10 resistance with EM and thermal. So basically you get a 25% increase to thermal and EM and you get a slight increase to structure or sorry, increase, uh, explosive and kinetic. So just for the low cost of 1.6 mil, um, you could probably increase the EHP of your Orca probably by about 5%, which makes a huge difference, especially since it's in your, um, it's all in your hole for the most part. So that is something I highly recommend. Try and find uh, an abyssal damage control that you're comfortable investing in. Slap that on your Orca because that thing is only going to help. Um, I do have a mining form in burst because I do occasionally do fleets uh, with my alts and I sometimes take this on and off. And just so I don't forget, I just always leave it on. Um, I actually don't use, if you notice on my other fit too, I don't use um, a tractor beam because I'd rather just use that CPU to fit, you know, more shield hardeners or more uh, shield command bursts, things like that. Um, Cause I honestly just use a mobile tractor unit, which fulfills the exact same role. Um, hopefully none of your miners are mining more than a hundred, you know, 100 uh, kilometers away from me for the most part. So they should all be relatively close. And again, I just want to use up that CPU to tank it as much as possible because this is um, a high sec fit. So again, with everything overloaded and we have those active uh, 300 and, or sorry, 392,000 EHP if we add in the abyssal damage control. So 
Um, all right, so now on over to, I just call it my Tonka just because it's tanked to heck and I remember playing with my Tonka trucks when I was <laughs> uh, really little. So again, this is just assuming the damage control too. So if, again, if you get an Abyssal one, uh, you could actually get this EHP a bit higher. Um, so again, just triple uh, transverse bulkhead twos to increase the EHP of our, um, is that the extension? Yeah, we'll go ahead and put in the harmonizing for the most part. And so again, um, we're not focused on a line time or anything like that. We're just trying to focus on as much tank as possible and protect our fleet members. So this is one I threw together. This is only if I had a dedicated orca strictly for fleet mining and I didn't want to solo mine. I didn't care about my drone mining yield, stuff like that. Um, I would only use this if I was in a very consistent corp and I was mining with, you know, six, seven plus people um, pretty consistently. So, but again, I'm just maxing out. I tried putting in like a large shield extender. I tried to use diff or, uh, different ones up here, but just the overall EHP is just strictly better if you just use hardeners for the most part. Um, again, these actually have shield com command burst twos. I just put up the higher tech level just in case people have it. But if not, tech level ones work perfectly fine. In my personal opinion, it's not worth the 13 and a half days to, to scale it up. But um, again, if we just overheat all of these, so again, I'm running two multispectrals, an EM, a thermal, and a kinetic. Um, we're looking at basically 570,000 EHP. So you are very, very hard uh, to take down. And so that's kind of the whole point. You are just strictly here to boost your mining fleet, not yourself. Um, and actually, there's just enough CPU. And again, this is why I don't really care to run a tractor beam. Um, you can actually fit two large uh, remote shield boosters as well as a medium with this fit for the most part. So and if you can't fit it for whatever reason, you can just downgrade some of these, whatever you need to do. But um, I mean, I guess you could just pre-lock your hulks, your retrievers, your coveters, you know, your mackinaws, because that's what's going to get targeted if your fleet gets ganked for the most part uh, up here in high sec. Um, you can actually just overheat these. You can pre-target them. And then now you're actually pushing... Um, about 1500 uh, HP every seven seconds, which um, isn't nothing, but uh, it could help one of your ships to survive another volley or just buy enough time uh, for Concord to show up to save, you know, one of your two or three ships that were getting ganked, something like that. So I'm not saying this is going to save them, but this will at least give them a fighting chance um, for the most part. Um, if you did want to get rid of a shield command burst in favor of another mining foreman burst, um, because you want to like really maximize your, your output, uh, remove the harmonizing charge. Keep the shield extension. You want to increase people's shield amount um, over increasing resistances um, in this instance, which is kind of weird because when I did the EHP, like, I don't know, uh, calculations or whatever, it just seemed better to increase the shield amount rather than increase the resistances um, for the most part. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is what I have. If you guys actually have a better fit, if you guys have any comments about this fleet fit or the solo orca fit, um, let me know. Really quick here, I'm going to show you guys why on especially my solo orca fit, I have a improved cloaking device as well as a 500mn compact micro warp drive. So uh, I run the micro, the compact micro warp drive because you can actually align in 10 seconds. All you have to do is just align to something, let this cycle once, and then you're already immediately into warp. But um, let's say you are in the belt. These should be running all the time, no matter what. Uh, so you should pretty much always have these hardeners running while you're solo mining all the time because you never know when you're going to get ganked, and this will actually help you get a fighting chance. But let's say you do have Catalyst warp into the belt, um, and they're about to gank you for the most part. So what you want to do is obviously align to whatever you're trying to, to get to. And as you can see, these um, hardeners are going right now. So let's say they're coming in. So what you want to do is align, cloak. You actually want to overheat the mid-rack. What that's going to do is going to allow you to turn on your micro warp drive. And you have to do this, I mean, relatively quickly for the most part. And so as you can see, I mean, I let that thing run down almost down to about 80%. And I turn off the cloak. Um, and because we overheated, we're actually getting more speed, even though we're, our speed is significantly reduced. Um, this will give you a fighting chance. So this does two things. When you cloak, they can't target you, and it actually buys your shields a time, like a full cycle, to be able to start getting overheated. Um, because what you want to do is try and get that overheat going as fast as possible. And again, if for whatever reason, if they do happen to lock onto you and interrupt your micro warp drive, you immediately want to hit both of your shield command bursts to increase your shield as much as possible. 
and just hold on and hope that there's not enough damage to take you out because that's pretty much all you can do. So again, the first line of defense is just uh, cloak, overheat, and you have about, I think it's five seconds from the time you cloak to hit the overheat rack and then activate your micro warp drive. So you have time, so don't freak out and click it super fast. You can see on that last one I did, I did it pretty slowly. So it's like cloak, overheat, micro warp drive. You can do it literally that slow. Um, don't forget to double click this uh, to make sure it turns off or you don't have to um, for the most part. And then you can warp. I let that thing run all the way down. And again, I do actually have maximum agility skills for all ships. So it's gonna be different for everybody, but I mean, you can practice with it. Do it a couple times, just make sure you kind of have the timing down. But the overheat does help a ton when you're trying to get out of there quickly. And again, if you do get ganked, just activate both of these and that'll give you the, the best fighting chance possible. So, and again, guys, uh, I really appreciate the feedback and I would love it if you guys would like, comment and subscribe. I honestly, personally right now work with like a marketing company. I've been there for a couple of years and all those kind of like um, interactions when it comes to likes and comments and downvotes and subscriptions, like all that stuff honestly plays a huge part in the algorithm with a lot of different platforms, uh, including YouTube. So it just helps out the content creators a ton. And I love interacting with you guys and bouncing some ideas um, off of you for the most part. And if you guys disagree with me, like I love it. I love learning new things about, um, about Eve. I mean, I played really hardcore for probably about eight or nine months now, so I haven't even been playing for a full year. So uh, one of these days, maybe I'll make a video about kind of like my Eve story uh, for the most part. But yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I would love to hear your guys' feedback on my fits. And if you guys have any suggestions, upgrades, or disagreements, let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to fly safe.